Hey, it's Dr. Pat here looking at part two of inverse functions. And so here's that official definition of inverse functions. The idea here is if two functions are inverses of each other, then what you get out is always what you put in. So that's the idea here is that you get out what you put in. All right. And so that composition, remember, I'm trying to make this a little zero there. So uh, composition of functions, when you compose them, when you plug one into the other and you get X out as the result each and every time, you have inverse functions. Another way to look at it, they undo each other. Okay, so you get what you started with. That's the key idea that we have for inverse functions. How to identify if two functions are inverses, plug them into each other. If you get X, you got inverses. All right, so that's how you find out if two things are inverses. Let's really do the work and find out how do you make an inverse. All right, I'm going to start off right here in this first example that I've got here. I've got two examples for you today. I've got y equals 6x minus 12. Now, that inverse relationship, remember the domain and range gets switched around. Input, output gets switched because the perspectives are changing because we're now standing where we ended up with on the original function and we're asking, how do we get back? What's the directions to get back to what we started with? All right, so one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to switch the X and Y's around. And then we're going to solve for Y. All right, now in the solving for Y, this is the interesting part for me as a math geek. In that process of solving for Y, notice what we do to cancel out this negative 12, or this minus 12 here, is we're going to add 12 to both sides. I mean, that's just the algebra we do to solve for a variable. But in the creation of that, we've now done a plus 12 over here on the left-hand side, which is opposite of what the original formula says to do. The original formula says to do multiply by 6 minus 12. In our first step for solving, we're going to add 12, and that's going to create for us automatically a new formula that is going to do the opposite step for us, because... If you take a set of directions to get somewhere, to the store, to get back home, you have to do the opposite steps in each direction, but in the opposite order. And so that's what's going on here. Instead of minusing 12, we're going to add 12. And then instead of multiplying by 6 to solve for y, we're going to divide by 6, and we now have a new function. So what we've got going on here is... In, uh, the inverse relationship says add 12 divided by 6. Notice that is the opposite steps of the original, which said multiply by 6, subtract 12. So when you do the inverses and you solve for y, you are actually cr creating a recipe, a set of directions that does the opposite thing in the opposite order. And then, of course, what we can do is we can rewrite this expression if we want to simplify it. But when you simplify an expression, you do lose some of the, the directions, the steps involved. And so it isn't as quite as evident that this is an opposite set of directions as this original one. Okay, but this middle one right here really is opposite steps. All right, let's take a look at another example. I'm going to start off with the function 3x squared plus 12, and that's a parabola. So we're going to have a domain restriction to begin with so that we can have a one-to-one. -one. So this is a parabola that's up here. It's a... Uh, crossing right here at two. It's kind of, uh, it's been stretched uh, vertically, so it's a little bit thinner than normal. All right, so that is not a one-to-one -one function. This domain restriction is basically saying, kick out this one on the left, I mean, excuse me, the one on the right, we're going to use the one on the left. So this is what we're using right here. I'll put that in pink. This is the piece that we're actually going to use. All right, so now, to, uh, to get the inverse, first step, once again, is to switch the X and Y's around. All right. Oh, one of actually, technically, the pre-step was I got rid of the function notation, the label F of X here, and I just replaced it Y because I wanted to do the, um, the switcheroos around, and then I also wanted an easier thing so I can do algebra with. So that's all that's going on there. Okay, so I switched things around. Now I'm just going to solve for Y. 
going to bring that 2 over to the other side by subtracting. Going to divide both sides by 3. And then what's the opposite of a power 2 right here? That would be the square root. Okay, so now notice, if I were to use the original guy up here, or function up here, um, this order I would do things is I would do power 2, multiply 3, and then plus 2. Those would be my three steps. I would do a power 2. I would multiply, I'll just put times uh, three, and then I would add two. So those are my steps in the order that I would do things. Notice our inverses here. It's first step, subtract two, divide by three, and then do the square root. Notice these three steps are exactly opposite of those three steps and in the opposite order. So that's what inverse is doing because you have to do the opposite set of directions in order to get back. Now the warning I have here about the domain is notice whenever you do the square root, technically you have a plus or minus option. But we want to be a function, uh, not having two answers. We only need one answer. And because we had our domain here using the left-hand side, the negative side, so instead, normally we take the positive in a lot of examples we've done in the past. But in this case, I'm going to kick out the, the positive, and I want to keep the negative there. I'm going to keep that negative because that is going to give me a graph that is technically below and that's what I want to match the one that was to the left so this part right over here not gray I mean I'm not great picture wise sorry but this piece right here is gonna match with this piece right here with over what I mean by match it's the mirror image over the line y equals x so that's why if I'm using this left side here I want the negative portion not the top not the positive positive would have been up there and it would not have matched right so that's why we want the negative case all right so that's your example of inverse functions in terms of the catch is just basically what you're doing is you're switching those x and y's around and just solving for y and then also my last step here notice that I put this label system back in. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I was identifying that this relationship here, this function, is the inverse of this one right here. See there's the, the, the function label f right there. So now I'm trying to label this as f inverse. And so that's all the last step that you have to do is just put back the appropriate la uh, labeling system. All right, thanks, take care, have a good day.